life's challenging and we try to give you as many tools and you know tips and tricks that we can kind of give you when you're here to give you the highest success rate. I think the, your, your best bet to get the oil out is like Dawn because it's like a it's like a degreaser, so it'll pull the oil out. Pull it out. But just try to like blot it, you know, don't don't like rub yeah. it in because it'll just kind of mash like make it, it bigger. Yeah, exactly. Who's doing the intro? You or me? Hey everybody, my name is Kara. I'm one of the dietitians here, and I was just hanging out with Vince. We were having a meeting here. We thought it'd be a great idea to get together and do this podcast to give a little bit kind of behind the scenes of what we do here at Pritikin. And by the way, Vince is our executive chef here, teaching me all kinds of things about cooking. <laughs> I really appreciate you, chef. I mean, I know the nutrition piece, but sometimes the cooking gets a little confusing to me. So it's just really nice having you to ask questions and um, helps me help our guests, um, you know, make the foods that they actually can enjoy and not make it feel like it's just plain and doesn't taste good and they're stuck with plain food for the rest of their lives. Correct. People, when they come here, they think they're going to eat, you know, eating healthy food is going to be boring or being flavorless or being something they're not going to want to enjoy. Uh, and that's certainly the opposite. You know, we try to get people into the mentality here that there's so many good, bold flavors, so many good textures and things that we're going to serve you here. You'll want to be excited to eat this food. You're going to enjoy eating it and you'll have fun doing it. And, and that's one thing that we try to really emphasize here is that not only you'll be eating healthier, you'll be living a healthier lifestyle and you'll just be enjoying it you know, all at the same time. So, um, you know, working with you, working with our other dietitians, working with our doctors here at Pritikin, it really is, is encouraging that you know, you know you're giving to our guests is not you know, slowly killing them. You know, you're, 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 you're giving them healthy food. You know, one, one, one story came to mind, uh, you know, always comes to mind. It, what kind of got me working here was uh, a place I used to work years ago. There was this uh, soup of the day that we would serve. And this was a, this was a resident, uh, residency that we would kind of con condo hotel. And, 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 and one woman who was this resident there, she says to, you know, to the major D, you know, uh, can you make the soup of the day? It's so good. Can you make it at least, you know, once a week? So we, it was a big seller, we, you know, and, and we went ahead and we obliged. And, uh, and, and you know, come find out months later, I went under this woman, never met her before. She cracks me down. We're setting up a little thing in the lobby, uh, a little event. She says, are you the chef here? I said, I'm one of the chefs here. Are you the chef who makes this wonderful, healthy soup? And I'm looking at her, right? And I'm like, look, I never did healthy cooking in my day, my life before I worked here. Uh, I certainly wasn't the poster child for eating this way before I first, first started working here, but things change, right? Yeah. And and certainly what kind of kind of progressed me to working here was this one particular story was this woman, she's like, are you the chef who makes that wonderful, healthy soup? And look, I was like, healthy soup? What are you talking about? She's like, the zucchini soup. And I'm like, zucchini soup? The zucchini bisque? And she's like, yeah. I was like, Mitchell, that's like a zucchini bar blanc sauce. It's a like cream, butter, cheese. There's nothing was healthy about it. And her face looked so saddened and so Aww. distraught that like she didn't know any better. You know, she just saw zucchini in the name. And she's like, it must be healthy soup, you know? And like, so things like that really kind of got me into you know, realizing that some people just don't realize that how unhealthy the food is that you're putting into your body, especially when you go out to eat, you know? Even if you think you're going to a vegetarian place, a vegan place, they're still going to use salts oils, sugars, you know, all the above, you know, not only, you know, you, sometimes you can get that misconception that your food is healthy, but it is not always the case. I totally agree with you. Um, one of the classes that I do is um, one of the lectures that I do with the guests is called label reading. And um, <clears throat> one of the things that I notice the most about label reading, what's so like, what freaks the guests out in the food is the sodium. Because a lot of times what I've noticed, and in me myself, honestly, before I came to Pritikin, um, sodium wasn't something that I really, really focused on, but um, it's something that was really brought to my attention. And now I really bring it to others' attention because we, like you said, we think that we're eating really healthy. We're eating salads and we're eating fruits and all of these things. But when we go out, we have no idea how much sodium and added oils and things like that are added yeah. to our food. So. Um, what I think that is so great about Pritikin um, is the interdisciplinary, um, the interdisciplinary group of people that we have here because we all have our own expertise on how to do things and then we all just kind of bring it together. So, you know, kind of what you said about the soup, we show people how to make zucchini soup that's really healthy and they wouldn't even totally know the difference because it's still creamy and it's still yeah. flavorful. And, and what we do is we, we teach them about the health rather than, yeah, I just want to lose weight. It's not about the weight loss. That's a side effect. Correct. What we really want to teach them about is the health. And 
I can help do that, but what you enable us to do is make it healthy and taste good. And I think that that's the secret sauce here at yeah. Pritikin. Well, I'll tell you, I think Pritikin is like a soup. You know, we have such good talent here and everything kind of comes together and it really, you know, you know works together. It tastes good too, you know, and um, obviously, um, you know, don't eat us, but, uh, <laughs> you know, we can we certainly give you a lot of good food to eat when you're, when you're staying here. You know, working here and working with such a, you know, a great team, it, it, it can really be satisfying to see that. You know what you're what you're giving to people is, is, is so is, is so flavorful and so healthy for them and and it's it's something they're really you know actually enjoying eating, excited you know? about I, yeah i mean i was just i was just thinking you just made me think about the woman right before we started our little conversation she was asking you about that plank salmon and she was just like yeah, some talking people, about it like it was the best thing since sliced bread if we can and, expose you to something new you know i hope i can do my job you know right that you know, maybe it's a new grain a new salad and you know, you know texture and flavor profile that you've never kind of experienced maybe things that you think you hated like you know parsnips i thought i hate parsnips roast them you'll love them you know there's different things that you can do to, to vegetables for instance to make them more flavorful, to make them more, you know, texture wise, you know, where you're going to enjoy them more. Because, you know, if you don't like steamed broccoli, you might like grilled broccoli better. You know what I mean? Seasoning things Agreed. a different way with the different herbs, with different spices, we're all gonna make the difference to where you're gonna actually really see like, hey, I'm, I'm satisfied with this vegetable, I'm satisfied with this grain, to where it was actually something you really, really you know, wanted to eat and you're gonna to wanna to eat it again. You know, so, you know, things like purple radishes or candy cane beets can make your you know, food look vibrant, look exciting. You know, taking something as simple as like a chickpea and toasting it will imitate like a peanut. You know, where you're not consuming straight nuts now, and you know, where you're consuming something that's going to be, you know, certainly healthier, but still give that crunch and satisfying kind of texture that you might be kind of craving, you know. And, you know, talking about sodium that you mentioned before, when people eat out, you know, there was a restaurant I was at in Philadelphia years ago, and I'm not going to name the rain. Uh, but it was a Mexican gourmet restaurant, they call themselves. Mm -hmm. And what I guess that meant was just putting a ton of salt and everything, which is most restaurants do. But, you know, the, the, the amount of salt that went into this food, it was right on the, on, the, on the menu. People look at it and they don't even care, you know, because like they don't it even know what that good. means. You know, they, 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 don't, they don't like whatever. I just, I'm ordering the enchilada, right? And the average amount of sodium on the menu was like 5,000 milligrams of sodium per dish, right? And Per dish. Yeah, per dish. So in, in, in kind of translating that, we only recommend having 1,500 in a day. Per day. You're, you're having that in like, you know, half in of your, half your, yeah, not even, maybe just the appetizer alone, you had that, right? So it's insane. Correct. So what the highest was 8,000. And people think like, how can that even be conceivable that you're gonna put 8,000 milligrams of sodium in something and not make it inedible? Most people want that, you know, they crave that salt. And it wasn't like you put a whole tablespoon of salt on the top of the food, it was, you know, corn tortillas that had salt, the enchilada sauce had salt, the seasoned beef had salt, the, you know, the canned beans had salt, the cheese had salt, and then it all has sodium to where it all kind of, you know, it just adds up to make this, whoa. Crazy, it's just ridiculous. crazy, so, crazy. You know, so one thing we really, really try to emphasize here, not just the salt, but, you know, the, the fat, you know, using things in, in uh, like toasted sesame oil, right? Like we'll use cooking spray for the most part, you know, but, you know, using something like truffle oil or toasted sesame oil for like a mushroom risotto or like a, mm. like a to, you know, like a, like a stir fry, you know, those oils have very, you know, intense Strong flavors, flavor. but we're using such small amounts by still using them in, in like a cooking spray uh, fashion by putting it into a spray bottle and spritzing it out and, and not just open, unscrewing the cap and going glug, glug, glug and putting a ton of, you know, oil into the pan. You know, this way you're going to still that little hint of that toasted sesame yeah. flavor. You know, and one one trick that I've always, you know, emphasized to our guests in the cooking school is putting a lid over the pan, right? As soon as that onion, the pepper goes into the pan, cover it. That way, the steam that comes up hits the lid, it condensates, it drips back down. And that way, you have that kind of natural kind of environment where you're still browning the vegetables effectively without adding too much water. Because if you add water, you just steam them. Without right. adding, without any water being kind of trapped in there, you're going to kind of unevenly burn them, which is going to just kind of have kind of, you know. It's not going to end up well. Yeah, exactly. See, exactly. that's what I love about you, Chef. You always teach us these little tips and tricks um, to really help us out and make the food taste as, as good as it can. And um, it doesn't have any salt in it. And the other thing that I really, really like about a lot of your dishes is that you use a lot of fresh herbs. And I find that when when we use the fresh herbs um there is no need for salt at all it just is so flavorful and um you just give such good instruction on what herbs go well with what so then when they're here they see you do it they watch you do it you give them the recipe they're able to take it home with them um which is so great because one of the things um about pritikin is that um it's sort of like a bubble here everything that happens here is beautiful rainbows and unicorns yeah. and then and then they have to go outside these doors. And I think that we we give them some 
very good tools um, to know what to do when they get out of here. And the other thing that's so great is that when they do leave, we still offer services. We offer the Pritikin on Track program so we can continue the conversation and make the Pritikin eating plan work for them when they go outside of these doors. Because we all know that when you get out there, it's not so easy. There's mm -hmm. a lot of yeah. there's a lot of things taunting us and and um, it's life's challenging. I mean, you know, and you when you, like you said you pop this bubble and you enter the reality of the real world again. I mean, you know, you're not going to live here for the rest of your life. Exactly. And we try to give you as many tools and you know tips and tricks that we can kind of give you when you're here to make you you know to give you the highest success rate. But one thing I always tell people is that if you're not doing this 100 percent when you go home, you're not a failure. You know, you're still doing, you know, hey, 60, 70, 80, 90 percent. That's great because it's probably better than what you're doing before you came here. Right. And absolutely. And, you know, some people just have different you know, pathways, and different ultimate goals that they can kind of really attain to. And hopefully what you try to try to learn here is that, you know, as much as what you do in your everyday lifestyle, staying active, eating the right food, it's a whole entire all encompassing thing. It's not right. just, you know, one or the other. You know, I mean, for me, I don't I don't work out that much in the gym because I don't have the time to do it. So what I knowing that. You know, I'll, I'll try to stay active as much as I can. You know, sitting down right now for, for this 30 minutes, probably most sitting I'll be doing all day, but just kind of running in the kitchen and running up and down the stairs, you know, all that adds up, you know, and you know, taking a, a walk somewhere as opposed to driving, if I can, all that adds up too. You know? Totally, totally. Um, I, I really agree. I used to think that um, if I just went ahead and went to my exercise class for my 45 minutes, that it was okay to just sit down for the rest of the day and be at my computer and do my work. But that's not true. Yeah. Physical activity, just being physical, physically active um, is so much more important than just taking a, 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 a certain amount of time and, and then the rest of the day just sitting down. So I think there's so many concepts that we present to the guests that they don't they don't really think about. All they really think about is like, how many calories does this have? And how many steps do I need to take? And, they're, and, and they don't really think about the big picture of, yeah, you just wanna be physically active. And yeah, you wanna eat more fruits and vegetables, but you don't need to count everything. You don't need to um, be so strict because a lot of times, you know, where does that get us? Correct, correct. It, it, it leads us down, down, a, down a path that we become unsuccessful. So I think we kind of change the dial a little bit here and, and teach people more of a big picture instead of lasering, fo laser focusing on little minute minutia type yeah. of details. The, the fad diets are what kills me because they, they're just not sustainable. I mean, they're you're not. looking at somebody who's on like the Atkins diet or keto diet or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever diet where you're just eating one particular thing and you know, withdrawing from everything else. It, it can be... Almost for some people, just you know, not only health wise, not very healthy for your body, but just just mentally, you know, it, it, it takes a toll on you. I and mean, we're giving you such a variety here. We're not really limiting you what you're having. We don't use sugar here, right? We're going to use apple juice concentrate, a little bit of maple syrup, a little bit of honey, but not as condiments, right? Little sweeteners in things to add that little pump of flavor. If you're somebody who's more sensitive, we'll add a little Splenda as you have, you know, suppose you're having a blood sugar spike up, you know, as you know, if you're using those direct sweeteners, Splenda or Stevia will be a good a good alternative. But those are things that we'll be using here. Um, but in addition to using lots of whole grains, fresh vegetables, lean proteins, there's so much you can have. You know, using minimal oil, you're just using cooking spray not adding a ton of salt or any salt, using things that have natural sodium or you know controlled sodium, like the Dijon mustard or lower sodium soy sauce in that stir fry. We're only gonna have 1,500 milligrams in a whole day, but it can kind of tweak it in little tiny increments where you're getting a little pump of flavor without actually using salt. Because salt is, you know, like you know, 2,400 milligrams of sodium in a teaspoon. In a teaspoon. So, you know, that's way more than, you know, and using things like, like, like Parmesan cheese, not as condiments, but in a sauce, in a dressing where you're kind of, kind of trolling that little bit where you're not just saying, hey, I'm just gonna go grab this ramekin and go glug glug, you know, for exactly. today. And that's where people kind of get misconstrued where they see us using it in a class here and they're like, oh, he's using soy sauce, he's using oh, toast. Oh yeah, they and, tattle on you all the time to me. Yeah, well, and, and I tell them, I'm like, yeah, you could tell Juan and, <laughs> and, and, and Kara all you want, but I'll tell you that they allow this. I mean, we, we, we it's a pretty rigid program that we go through to make right. sure that what we're doing is is what we would actually conserve. So um, it, it, it's 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 definitely you know a, a challenge to make the healthiest food the flavor the most to flavorful as good. well, right? Because most people are, are expecting you know when they come here, if you're somebody who's like eating at you know these bad unhealthy restaurants and eating out a lot, you're consuming a lot of salt, and salt is a flavor enhancer. Nothing's going to hit in your palate like salt does. So when you're like coming here the first night, you're like chef, your food's like ah you know like because it's salt, you know, and and then two three four days later. 
once you kind of kind of wash your palate, they cleanse pee it that, all out. Yeah, yeah, and you pee all that salt <laughs> out. You'll you'll lose weight just in the first couple of days, just Absolutely. from the kind of purging the the natural you know moisture retention. Your body's kind of holding out salt, but your food will also start tasting more different, you know. And if you, people leave here after two weeks and they go experience like a regular like bag of chips, it tastes salty to them. Like, rarely, rarely, yeah, because it's so thing that you're you 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 kind of cleanse your palate from the salt, you know. And something most people don't realize how much salt is in things. It's 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 pretty astonishing. I totally agree. Um, you know, it's funny that you said about, but Jeff, you use fruit juice concentrate and use maple syrup because when I do the lectures and I talk about, um, I talk, I talk all about the different types of sugars that they need to be careful of, including maple syrup and and fruit juice concentrate and all of these things. And then they say, but but Chef uses it in his in his in his desserts and he uses it in his salad dressings and things like that. And I said yes. And we know that because we analyze everything and we make sure that it fits the Pritikin guidelines. So it just goes to show that um, it's not an all or nothing type of situation. We create ways to really enhance the flavor of the food, make it taste better, really, you know, talk about the low uh, calorie density foods and how to front load them. And, th and that's another thing that I think is really important that um, a lot of things that we do at Pritikin, um, they're for a reason, but they're, we don't really say anything about it. We just kind of lead them through. So when they go through the line, the lunch line, the first place they end up, it, they go to is the salad because yeah. we really want to front load them with these very watery, fibrous foods so that it'll help fill them up. And then they go to the soup. Same thing. We give the biggest bowl we have too for the salad as well. <laughs> it's like the biggest bowl. And then, have. you know what, by the time you get to the main dish, you really don't need that much of it because you're really front loading with these um, very low calorie dense foods, which fills up the belly. And then when they're done, they're like, you know what? I feel good. And then another thing, actually, in about 20 minutes from now, I'm going to do a mindfulness luncheon, which really, really allows them to take the time to taste, appreciate the flavors, the textures of the food, so that when they're eating, for example, corn on the cob, it actually tastes sweet yeah, when yeah. they think about it. And it doesn't have any sugar or anything. It's just naturally sweet. And I just think um, what's so great about Pritikin also, it's just sort of a timeout. They can just kind of relax. Everything is done for them. Um, they learn a whole lot and then they practice it. And um, it's just a really good place to come to learn, to meet different people, to learn new strategies and really utilize this as a lifestyle, not necessary as what we call the diet. Yeah, I, I like to think of Pritikin almost like as like a landlocked cruise. You know, you come here for the week or two, and you meet a lot. Of, like you said, you meet a lot of people. And everything's prepared for you, and it's a great place to be. Yep. Talking about your mindful eating lunch, and mm. one thing that I really took I took a lot from that was um, I, I taught I passed on to my uh, my, my, my my father in law. Um, he would always like rush through eating, like to, you know the meals I've been barely being served. He's already done, you know, like yep. cleaned his plate already. I'm like, God, calm down a little bit. You know, why don't you eat with your non dominant hand? And he's like. What do you mean? I was like, just eat with your other hand. You don't normally eat with. Slow them down dramatically. You know what I mean? It's just something simple as just that. Just a little thing. Just and and little it just took, took time to actually appreciate as opposed to just kind of, you know, not actually just, you know, shoveling in his mouth to where you're, you know, it's eating to sustain, you know, eating to actually enjoy what you're eating, you know? And, um, you know, one, one thing that I, like, I love to do here is this, we have such a variety that we're serving here. It's just really... Uh, it's really appealing to have such a wide you know, variety of grains to serve, a wide variety of different you know, animal proteins that will serve mainly seafood, right? But right, you know, right. we might serve some other things like you know, chicken or, or, or turkey. We're doing some smoked turkey here for tomorrow uh, in our smoker. It's a new recipe we're doing. It's going to be nice. Uh, but even things like small amounts of very lean red meat will allow uh, yeah. you know, small amounts. You do amounts, the venison, so. right? The bison steaks. We can bison. do venison as well. You know, uh, sometimes we do venison. Uh, but we usually will try to do uh, bison because it tastes... Just like beef, you know. I mean, if if somebody was to tell you that the yeah you know, what you're serving to them was was, was uh, venison was was beef, you would you would call him a liar because it's very distinctive it tastes flavor. More gamey, yeah. It's very gamey, you know. But other very lean red meats would be you know venison, ostrich, antelope, elk. Those are all gamey tasting. Whereas bison or buffalo tastes very similar to beef, so that's what we try to go for. But you know, one thing I always had to talk to you about I was thinking about calorie density. I didn't want to interrupt you was yeah. was it something as simple as like a baked potato. It's like so eye opening, right? Like. When you look at the baked potatoes you serve here, they're 100 calories, and it's just a dry baked potato, which nobody's going to eat just a dry baked potato. Yeah, just which, like bite it like an yeah, apple. <laughs> yeah, no, no, obviously. So you know, when you take that stick of butter, which is 800 calories, and you take a slice out of it, you just doubled the calories of your baked potato. 
as simple we as that. Sabotage that potato. So, so it's not how the potato is. It's, it's not the potato itself. It's how it's cooked or what you're adding into it is what's going to shoot the calories way through the roof. So, you know, it's 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 satiety. You know, so you can make a chili and pour that on top of the baked potato. You can add, you know, fat-free sour cream. You can add scallions, roasted garlic, salsa. The salsa. You know, I love the salsa on the baked so, potato. So there's good. so many things you can do with it. You know, what I mean, you know, you can make a corn dip and put it into there. There's so many things we like to serve. You know, here that you kind of give people kind of more kind of eye opening, you know, ideas like oh, this is like actually yeah, like little... this is easy. I can do this exactly, and that and that's really, I feel what what um, what people get out of this program, and um, also what what I get out of what people give to me is is so rewarding because I think sometimes people come here um, not knowing what to expect. And they might be a little bit nervous. They might be a little bit overwhelmed. There's a lot of classes. There's a lot of things going on those first couple of days. Um, but by the day they get to around day four, day five, um, there's like a spring in the step. They're excited to go to their exercise. They're excited to go to cooking. They're learning all new things. They're feeling better. They're less bloated. They have more energy. There's such mm -hmm. a big shift. And I really think um, it helps people say, you know what? This is doable. Like I can do this, and it's it's um, it's very rewarding for them. And then when they feel good, it, it bounces back onto me, and then it, it helps me be better and do better. So um, I find I find this job to be super rewarding, and um, I'm so happy to be here. There's a reason I've worked here for almost 15 years, Kara, and that's 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 it right there. You nailed it. And I think we could sit here and talk about this place all day. But we may be running out of time, and I think you have somewhere to be. I so, do, but it was so nice hanging out with you today, Chef nice Vince. nice to hang out with you. I appreciate it, Karen. All right. And we'll do another one soon. All right. Sounds Thanks. great. Have Take a great care. day. You too.